we're busy googling mapsing. Yeah. Googling mapsing. When you're busy Google mapsing. And you notice it's behind that big tree. <laughs> Spotted one of those funny little things. Literally, you get off of the train into London and it's like you're part of the stampede of people. It's insane. The London Wheel opened in 2000 and it is the largest and most famous observation wheel in the entire world. As I'm nearing the situation, I seriously doubt I'm gonna be able to get on. The queue is so long. <laughs> to post the queen to my mother because she's like obsessed with the queen <laughs> so i thought i'd send her this postcard but because the queen's head is cut in a funny shape i'm not allowed to send it so i guess i'll be taking the queen home with me for my mother london eye you have been fantastic to look at unfortunately i could not go on you but i will come back and experience you at some point now i am quickly rushing back to the train station so that i can catch a train from westminster to richmond because I'm going to go visit some family there. Is this not hilarious? <laughs> this is so funny. Hello. <laughs> okay, bye bye. I just met this lovely lady from India, and because we're both traveling alone, we took photos of each other in front of the London Eye. To be honest, she landed up taking videos instead of photos, but it doesn't matter. They're funny, and I suppose that is the beauty of traveling on your own. Could you help me work out what train to catch to Richmond? Oh, is it on this one? Yeah. Oh, fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Have a lovely day. I'm with my dad's cousin and we are at the cutest little bakery, the Hummingbird Bakery in Richmond. The stress in this moment is literally half past four and my ticket only allows me to go through before half past four. Thank you. The following day. <laughs> it may not look it, but it is absolutely freezing today. I literally had to pull my bike over just so that I could warm up my hands because I can't feel my hands as I ride. I have also decided to have a little snack that would be one of my number one tips. Make sure you take a snack and some water. You also want your brain to be functioning at an optimal level because you have to focus as you ride. Anyway, so today I'm on my way to Folkestone because I'm catching the Euro Tunnel to Calais. I honestly cannot believe that I am already on my way home. Well, home. My experience in the UK came and went like that. My days were packed and like moving the whole time on the train, off the train, walking to the next place, walking, walking, walking. I love it. Okay, I'm gonna finish this banana. It is so cold. I'm literally going to put this jacket underneath my riding jacket. <laughs> this is my South African blood. I'm not made for this. Not made for this. <laughs> Euro tunnel, let go. Don't forget to put your watches forward one hour and to drive on the right after leaving the terminal. We hope you have had a pleasant crossing with Euro tunnel and we look forward to seeing you again soon. It's like a cute little market where everyone's selling their homemade things. <laughs> it's also super weird to be hearing everyone speaking French. Oh my gosh, this is so adorable. 
traveling gluten-free is literally so difficult because if you can eat gluten you can literally just grab a sandwich and eat it whereas for instance now i'm at the shops and there isn't even a salad for me if you must know what just happened to me oh it's starting to rain i'm walking around there's nothing for me to eat so i'm spending about 20 minutes trying to find something so i pick up something that i think is yogurt one nectarine which i'm pretty sure is like rock hard and i go to the like ready-made food section because luckily there was like these little notes saying whether or not it had gluten so i asked the guy what is that you know kind of like what animal so he says meat like kind of you know it's like with a hectic french accent so i'm like okay now i need to find out do i need to reheat it or is it ready to eat so i'm like do i have to heat it you know and i'm trying to explain to him warm must i make it warm so eventually i'm like okay i'm gonna google translate this so i open up google translate and i type in must i warm it up and then it comes out in french in the end we end up communicating to each other him translating something in french to english me translating something from english to french him translating something oh my gosh so eventually i was just like you know what i'm just gonna buy it it cost me three euros 78 for like this little bit i get to the till that guy can't speak english either and i'm going spoon <laughs> or fork <laughs> and he says no there's nothing so i walk around the town for like another 10 minutes trying to find a place where i can buy a, a spoon or fork nothing this looks so dodgy this bottle opener is the only thing that i can find that i can eat with so i've given it a little bit of a wash <laughs> it smells nice it's got like gherkins and things. I don't know. I'm so scared. Let's pray this isn't raw. I think I would freak out. Okay. <gasps> Why am I struggling? Me versus the meat. Ah! It's definitely... Definitely cooked. It's actually pretty good. The meat is super soft. I don't know if that's a good or bad thing. The hardest part is trying to get a piece out. Huh? My food's getting hooked in the bottle opener. I never thought I'd be eating with a bottle opener. What has my life come to? Oh my god. You sound so morbid, Michaela. I'm not. Yes, you are. You're like, oh, my handbag was stolen. How did it get stolen? We went to the Germany to come to Pasha for the dinner. So Yannicka was driving. So we walked back to her car like after the concert. Got into her car, so I was in the passenger seat. She was in the driver's seat. And she was getting money out to pay the, the car card. And as she was trying, like she was obviously in her purse or whatever. And the car doors weren't locked. Someone came and opened up her car door and tried to like pull her bag off her lap. So I leaned over to try and grab her bag. And as I was doing that, someone came and opened my car door. And my handbag with my oh. So moral of the story is don't don't defend your friends. <laughs> oh God. I mean, who would have thought you would have stolen from like that in Portchester? Um. And I'm Mhm. Mm I'm listening. Huh? I don't even know what I'm eating. You know French. What is a passe? A passe? Huh? A passe. A passe. Serve perfect pour Tutis miseretis. You are the worst. <laughs> <laughs> what about cre creme legere fa fabrique normandy? This is the words on this thing. Maybe it is a Spanish product. Bridelice. 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 I mean, honestly, it's one of those versions. The following day. Can you believe it? I am packing for the last time for the final leg of my journey. I'm going to be back home in Rotterdam. This was probably one of the biggest challenges of my life. And I've done it without a hiccup. I mean, let's just hope and pray I, I get home safely today. But on my own, I've traveled all the way. And I know for some it's like, oh, whatever, you know. Um, I can do that in one day but on a sportster with all my stuff and making all of these videos and showing where I've been and having the energy to just keep going it's very different to just doing the ride and personally I feel distance doesn't mean that you've had an amazing travel sometimes you can go a kilometer down the road and you've experienced more of the world than someone who's gone 600 kilometers down the road so if someone tells me oh I rode from here to here it's like oh cool but what did you see I saw Dover I I saw the UK, the whole of it. I saw a little bit of Calais, I saw Bruges. It's just, I really am so lucky and I'm so happy that I pushed myself to go for it on my own. Okay, now let's get home.